Good afternoon. This is a meeting of the Des Moines Water Works trustees, and uh, this is um, a meeting that uh, will be conducted today with uh, one member coming uh, in just as soon as he can arrive. Uh, Graham Gillette will be coming in. Dave Carlson is absent. I am Jim Grant, the uh, co-chair, and I will be conducting the meeting on behalf of Dave Carlson today. The first item is a consent agenda. Do we have a motion on that? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 The action items will follow a public comment session. Uh, is there anybody in the audience that would like to comment on any one of the items today please step forward to the podium seeing none i will uh, move on to the action items and action item a is a request authorization to purchase consolidated network storage yes this item was discussed at finance and audit earlier this month uh, but as is summarized in the uh, leading paragraph, uh, we need to upgrade our uh, network storage as it's uh, nearing its capacity. Plus, uh, it's six years old and, and uh, in need of replacement. So we went through, our IT folks went through a uh, proposal process, RFP process, and the company IP Pathways submitted the lowest proposal, uh, a little over $180,000. Um, details uh, about that are with the attached memorandum and uh, what we'd like to ask the board today is for authorization to execute a contract with IP pathways for equipment and services totaling $181,169.34. Do I have a motion on that? So moved. Second. Any comments or discussion? Jim, just as Randy said, this did come before finance. We had a great presentation by our IT director, and um, we answered. he answered all of the questions that we had regarding it. The criteria that you'll see that they use to measure um, the evaluation is listed here in our booklets, so we had recommended it as a committee. Thank you, Sue. Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, item number B is a 2012 corporate insurance renewals. Yes, this item was uh, reviewed also at finance and audit. Uh, mm -hmm. A.J. Gallagher, Arthur J. Gallagher, uh, whose representative, our account representative, is in the audience today in case there are any questions uh, about the renewal. Uh, renewals come up each year uh, this time for November 1. Uh, you can see the listings. Uh, we're looking at an increase uh, predominantly uh, in two areas, uh, general property, the boiler and machinery, which is due to increased valuations. Uh, I believe that's largely because of the Sailorville treatment plant being added uh, or just increased values in general. And then uh, in the workers' compensation area. Uh, oh, wow. And uh, those are summarized in the memorandum that's attached to the yellow. So what uh, we've got $850,000 budgeted uh, for our corporate insurance. Uh, so what we're asking the board today is to accept the insurance program renewal submitted by Arthur J. Gallagher, Risk Management Services, Inc. So moved. Second. Second. Any questions? I do want to add something on this one, Jim, because okay. again, this came to finance. Um, <clears throat> Mary Griffin is here, and she answered a lot of our questions okay. that we had. We are making a change this year that you may have noted, and that is that we are adding cyber liability. And last year, um, we discussed this, but it was not recommended by staff. This year, it is being recommended. Um, the, and in talking to Peggy, and Peggy, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's a constant balance between risk and cost. And this year, we feel uh, with our increased presence and in taking credit cards over the phone or taking credit cards for payment, 
we thought that the increased risk was there and it was a recommendation of the finance committee to go with the recommendation of staff and that is to include the cyber liability. Thank you, Sue. Any other comments? Um, I guess I have the one comment, uh, the flood policies. Mm -hmm. um, I assume that if we take action on this today that uh, it's estimated at 5% that the actual adjusted amount will be included in the, in the policy and that's what we're approving as well. That's correct. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Item C. It's a request authorization to execute a 2080 agreement between the Wastewater Reclamation Authority and Des Moines Waterworks for property acquisition and construction of Wastewater Reclamation Authority and Des Moines Waterworks feeder main from Water Street to Southeast 9th Street and Railroad Avenue. That's a long title. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a joint project that we started several years ago in conjunction with the uh, City of Des Moines. Uh, uh, the pathway of the extension of Martin Luther King Roadway uh, was going to necessitate a WRA uh, sewer project and our computer modeling indicated uh, a benefit for us in ensuring increased reliability uh, of our distribution and feeder main network by extending a uh, large feeder main under the Des Moines River uh, parallel to the new bridge and following generally along the uh, east bank of the Des Moines River as the map, attached map shows. Uh, we've got an agreement that's uh, been through the WRA legal counsel, city legal counsel, and our legal counsel. And that's what we're asking the board today is the authority to approve that uh, agreement. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, any comments or questions? On this item, um, I think the title goes along with the amount of money that it costs to <laughs> put this all in place. Yes, it's uh, expensive. The longer the title, the, the more expense, yeah. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Item D is a request to authorization to reestablish the data public hearing for the 2011 Moffett Reservoir Erosion Control as the date of the October 2011 board meeting. Yes, this item is uh, before us to delay the uh, uh, bidding uh, in order to end the public hearing uh, because we've heard from the Corps of Engineers who uh, stated they feel they have jurisdiction over this project and therefore we have a number of other steps that we've got to go through in the event uh, that becomes the final determination. Um, we've done other work at Maffet uh, before that hasn't, in which the Corps has not had jurisdiction and therefore has not had permitting. But frankly, we haven't done an erosion control project like this uh, on the lake mm -hmm. either. So uh, we continue to. Uh, uh, work with the court to resolve that issue and uh, involving legal counsel as well. Uh, but we'd like to ask to reestablish the public hearing uh, for the October 2011 board meeting. Do I have a motion for that? So moved. Second. Any comments or questions uh, on that item? If none, mm -hmm. all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Action item E is a request authorization to solicit bids for 2011 flooding station intake repairs and establish the date of public hearing as the date of the October 2011 board meeting. Okay, this item uh, is our small flooding station, pump station that's just west of our office building here, but it's what keeps our uh, recharge ponds full. We pump river water uh, through a series of pipes and into the ponds and through uh, an open ditch to the very west uh, recharge pond. Uh, that, after a series of floodings and just age, uh, we need to do some work to the intake pipes uh, and screens 
as well as just general cleanup of that facility. And so that's the project that engineering is bringing before us. Uh, we've got an estimate of $112,000, which just about matches what we've got budgeted mm -hmm. uh, for this project. So we'd like to ask the board to authorize staff to solicit bids for the 2011 flooding station intake repairs and establish the date of public hearing as the date of the October 2011 board meeting. So moved. Second. Any questions or comments on that item? Hearing none, uh, I have a vote. Aye. 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 Opposed? Item F, uh, is a request uh, authorization to execute <coughs> lease with Verizon Wireless at the Tenney Standpipe site. Yes, our Tenney Standpipe is our four million gallon storage tank uh, at Merle Hay Mall mm -hmm. uh, on Merle Hay Road. Uh, there are two monopoles uh, with cell tower facilities on them currently, and we received a request from Verizon to co-locate on one of those monopoles and then to lease uh, space on the ground to put their equipment. And so that's what this agreement, uh, series of agreements, uh, accomplishes. Uh, the initial rent will be $12,000 the first year and then a 3% per year escalator as part of this uh, arrangement. So we'd like to ask the board today to adopt the uh, attached resolution approving the execution of a lease agreement with Verizon Wireless and LLC and doing business as Verizon Wireless. This, is, yeah. this is a public hearing uh, on this item, so I will open the public hearing. Any comments, please come forward to the podium. There's been no written or oral comments. No written or oral. Okay, thank you. Seeing none, I will <coughs> close the public hearing and ask for a motion. I move to adopt <coughs> the resolution. Second. Second. Any comments or questions on this item? I do have one question. Um, the rent, what budget item does that flow into within our various projects? Where, do, where does the rent money go uh, mm -hmm. of $12,000? Uh, it's not in projects. It's in our general revenue accounts of under land use revenue. When you see the budget, um, there's a line for land use revenue which includes both this and our other miscellaneous rentals like for the athletic fields. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Uh, any, I would ask for a vote on that motion. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye, aye. Vote aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item G is acceptance of joint Eastside Peter Main Phase 3. Yes, this uh, is the third and final contract on the Peter main, transmission main that connected our system to the uh, joint east side water tower that has been in service. Uh, SM Henchies was the contractor. Uh, the original contract amount was a little over $3.8 million. And uh, there were a little over $200,000 in change orders. Uh, the big one uh, was getting through uh, Corps of Engineers levy and requirements that they, additional requirements they added to the uh, to us, mm -hmm. as well as uh, additional pavement that had to be uh, replaced uh, at the request of Polk County and Pleasant Hill. So the final contract amount uh, uh, was a little over 4.1 or almost 4.2 million dollars. Uh, the this project is being repaid uh, by the uh, customers of uh, City of Altoona uh, and our direct customers in Pleasant Hill and the Polk County water customers. So we'd ask the board today is to accept this joint east side feeder main phase three contract completed by SM Henches and Sons Inc. in the amount of four million one hundred seventy one thousand sixty eight dollars and sixty eight cents. Do you have a motion to accept this? So moved. Second. Any comments or questions on this item? And ask for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. 
Motion passes. Action item H is a request authorization to establish the data public hearing for easement for sanitary sewer at Maffet Park property at the date of the 2011 board meeting. Yes, this item is, you look on the attached map, uh, Maffet Lake Estates uh, is a new housing development that probably goes back at least two years. Uh, they're just really starting that development. Uh, the, uh, it was annexed into, I believe it's annexed into West Des Moines, yes. And uh, there was no sewer facilities in that uh, area, and they were planning to uh, uh, use uh, either septic tanks or some type of mechanical, uh, individual house mechanical systems. Well, the project, and I think the development has extended that to a point in time where now they've worked out an arrangement for uh, uh, sanitary sewers, and then we'll pump that sewage to the north side of the Raccoon River. And they need uh, some easement from Des Moines Water Works in order to accomplish that. So we'd like to, first of all, establish a public hearing uh, to uh, inform the public of this uh, request before any easements are uh, signed and negotiated. Thank you, Randy. Um, do I have a motion to establish the data hearing? So moved. Second. Second. Any questions or comments? I'm just trying to get this property mm -hmm. in my mind. That crystal light, that's the old... Uh, how it's saying, yeah. the same but that I just wanted to have where it's all mm -hmm. right. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Randy, I want to feel better if you wanted to mention that the uh, city brought this up to us quite late and have asked for an opportunity to have some temporary access, which we intend to grant them before the easement is, is granted. And I think that's within the general manager's authority, but I wanted to mention that mm -hmm. that's something. It hasn't taken place yet, but you intend to do that. Yes. Okay. Any any further comments? Uh, all those in favor, vote aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item four is an information uh, item section, and item A is committee reports. I will report for the planning committee. Um, we did not have a meeting uh, last month, so uh, we'll move to the Finance and Audit Committee for Sue. We had um, three major items. Um, you've heard about two of them, the network storage, which we take an action on, as well as the insurance renewals. And then the third item that we talked about, <coughs> the preliminary water rates. And I think it is it has been clear to the staff that the intent of this board is to do whatever we can to reduce costs within the utility um, to you know partner with city of des moines with polk county with other um, government entities so that we can save taxpayer dollars because we would love nothing more than to not have any kind of a rate increase um, and i think that message came through loud and clear um, to the staff um, Randy is still working on those areas within the new budget. I think it would be safe to say where we do think we can have um, some reduction in expenses. And I think we have our ongoing project that we all know about with the city of Des Moines looking at various areas that we can consolidate costs and save taxpayers dollars. So um, in looking at the preliminary water rates, we've been given a couple of scenarios. Just to remind everyone, it would be at the October board meeting that we would bring forward from the finance meeting that we'll have in October, our recommendation for water rates. Um, if we choose to delay that, we have to make notice by six months to our customers. So that would have an impact in not putting water rates into effect in April, but rather in May. So keep that in mind. So I'm saying this in mind so that everyone attends the finance meeting that we have coming up in October where we'll really dig into um, each of the categories that we have as we project out what our water costs will be. And I appreciate all of you. I mean, we've had 
great participation by all of the board members at our committee meetings. Uh, but we do have some preliminary scenarios for us to discuss. And I think we've asked for some additional information and ideas to come back. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. If I may, I mean, I think the um, discussion we had at the committee meeting is important, but since it's a little bit broader format, it's, I'm going to restate some of those things. Please. You know, I think that it is, um, we kind of had some consensus at the committee meeting that it's our intent to hold down costs, if possible, not to raise rates. The thing that it was, I was impressed upon is certain things are going to increase over time, cost of, cost of chemicals and some of those things that we can't necessarily control ourselves. And it would be somewhat foolish of us to say arbitrarily we're not going to raise rates because we want to you know, show that we're not going to raise rates. And the fact of the matter, that type of thinking could catch up to us later mm -hmm. because we're going to end up paying it, it later. And I thought that was explained really well and it stuck with me just to show that I was a student and I paid attention. Mm -hmm. Stuck with me at that meeting. But I think right. that's something to, to remember. The other thing that I continue to want because uh, our those, those uh, entities that buy water from us out in the suburbs you know, like to beat us up when we raise costs or we raise our fees. And I understand that. None of us want to pay more. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that was done at the committee meeting and and really in, throughout our meetings recently about rates is trying to figure out how to explain our rates as easily and as simply as possible so that when they go up, we can explain it and that right. our customers, whether they're individual customers or municipalities, understand that. The third point that I thought was also made at the committee meeting that was really important and it was made by uh, employees of, of the water, uh, of Des Moines Water Works, and that is uh, that we don't brush off the attempts that have been made in the past to save save money and the hard work that goes on at the Water Works every day. We truthfully, in my opinion, in many respects, are an efficient, well-run organization, and that all of us saying we want to do more isn't, and maybe I'm speaking for myself, but isn't in a way to belittle what's been done in the past or what right. is done every day. But the fact that mm -hmm. if there's some stone that hasn't been unturned, if there's overturned, if there's something that we can do uh, to share services with the city that makes us better and in the, and in the process makes holds our costs down, we want to find it. Right. And so, I mean, I think those three things were really, to me, were addressed well in the committee meeting and it's kept me focused on what we want to do. Mm -hmm. So I don't, you know, maybe you want to add or disagree with that, but I think that, you know, th those are important things. No, I think that's a great point. And, and I thought it was interesting because um, one individual that was sitting at the table who was a Waterworks member and who works in the field, um, you know, kind of threw up his hands and said, we're doing everything we can. I mean, what else can we do? And so we wanted to make it clear, we're not trying to you know, select one group of individuals. We're not saying in the field you have to conserve or in management you have to conserve or in administration. We're saying, have we looked at every possible angle? And if we have, and then we come back and say, we have a 2% rate increase or a 30% rate increase, at least we can say as trustees of this organization that we have done our job. And so, you know, to the workers in the field, um, I think we sent a message, and I hope it has been delivered back, because I'm looking in the back of the room at some of you, that we do appreciate every time you are trying to take on additional work and do additional things. But we're asking for that to be done throughout the utility, and I guess we'll see it when we see the budget. And, you know, I just want to add one other thing, point to that, because we've had discussions at the board table and Leslie's group looking at uh, human resources with the city and that sort of thing. All of those activities that we do, whether it's asking for salary comparisons among what we pay our employees and other mm -hmm. people and, and other entities pay employees, those are all healthy things. And we, you know, we need to ask those questions and we need to, we need to feel comfortable as individual board members about those things. And I just, I thought the comments made by, by the employee group was important at the last meeting because I don't want anybody to think that I'm 
I'm suspect or beating up on them because I want to have a salary, salary comparison. I want to have something else. We're just doing our job of looking under every stone, and I think we're doing that, and I'm, I'm proud of the work that's been done. Yeah, I, I think that's a very important point. When we reach a decision on water rates, whether it goes up or stays the same or whatever, we know that we've looked at all those stones, mm -hmm. and we can honestly say, you know, there is or there isn't any movement, and when the budget comes forward, that's when we will be able to do that, and that's the purpose of the of the whole effort mm -hmm. right now. Uh, will we have a water rate increase? We don't know, but we know costs of doing business everywhere is going up. We just want to make sure that if there is an increase, it's minimal for what it takes to cover those things. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate what you said, Jim, at the, at the committee meeting too, because it also sheds some light on those things. As we look at years out, and as we can predict, predict what we're going to do over the future, obviously we know those, those numbers are going to change, mm -hmm. but that gives all of us and our customers an idea of where things are heading, and frankly, how we make decisions. And I thought that was very important. Yeah. We sell half of the water, basically, that we produce to areas outside of the citizens of the city of Des Moines. Mm -hmm. And so we have not only, you know, the stakeholders, if you will, um, that we all represent, but the other 50% of the water that we produce. And, you know, that group of Sirdwick members, we need to be held accountable to them mm -hmm. and to make sure when they say, are you giving us the best price? because we have the best example of regionalized government with the Des Moines Water Works that I think we have anywhere in our community. You know, we service such a broad area and it's far less expensive to do it this way than to have every single small organization or city having their own water treatment plant in their own area. So we want to continue to grow that and I think we've made some recent um, overtures in that regard to expand our area because of the economies of scale. Mm -hmm. And explaining to those members and those those customers about how we do this. And I know, right. Randy, I think you're going to go meet with them and explain this to them and right. work through it. And I think that's very important that every every customer, whether it's my neighbor or you know the city of Irvindale, has that opportunity to hear and ask those questions. And so. I think that's another good thing that came out of that meeting. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Sue? Uh, we just had a budget update that Peggy has given us, um, and as I said, we'll see more on that in the future. Uh, maybe a little bit too early right now to tell where we're ending up, uh, but I think we're, we're all pleased with the projected amount of pumpage that we see in the budget uh, that's being projected ahead, and then the final thing was just this um, agribusiness park that uh, we loaned money to the city of Des Moines, and so we are getting a small, small part of that back now because a fraction of the land has been sold. But it was all in the minutes that I'm sure you read. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> thanks. Thank you, Sue. Um, item B is the CEO and general manager's comments. Well, what I'd like to start out first, uh, first of all, um, we've gotten a good start with our enterprise asset management project, and um, we have uh, two of the consultants here in the audience, and um, and Stephanie Running, our project manager, that I'd ask them to you know, give a kind of 15-minute summary of what they have discovered thus far in their kind of discovery phase of the project, and. Um, uh, we have Brad uh, Jerkovic and Scott Scott Stocking, uh, both from Wolpert uh, here, and and Stephanie. I don't know what the order they're going to go in, but I will turn it over to the three of you. Off here. Um, following the board approval in June, we were able to kick off with the EAM project implementation uh, July 18th, and we've had a really great start. 
since that time, uh, all the staff, a lot of the staff at Des Moines Waterworks has participated in both individual interviews and uh, workshops that were facilitated by our consultants. We've had quite a number of uh, staff already from Wolpert and Stratum come in and work with our teams, and they're very experienced. Um, Everybody is very happy with their level of knowledge with of the utility industry and other large organizations that they can bring that knowledge back to our organization. Um, you're going to find the first quarterly status report in your handout. Um, that will give you some additional status details. These guys are not, we're not going to talk about the status details. Now, um, we're asking them just to present an overview of their discovery. Um, so Scott Stocking is uh, my cohort. He's the project manager on the Wolpert side, and Roger Beck is one of our consultants as well. So I'm going to invite them to go ahead and give that high-level overview of their initial findings. And I'm going to hit the light up here so we can all see the screen a little better. How do you want us to do this? So that we can we'll need to, I believe we're going to need to give them the file for okay. them to upload. And I can't reach that one. Well, you'll want that one there. I can have right by you. Yeah, oh, that one's on. Okay, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Just show it on your forehead. Can you see it? Yes. I can. It's, it's getting more widescreen. <laughs> <laughs> well, good afternoon. We'll try to make this as brief as we can, but um, I think it's particularly appropriate that we're going to be talking about some of the things that we are, given the conversation that we just listened to all of you uh, get involved with, because much of what you discussed is, is very relevant to the enterprise asset management project. So. Hopefully this will be the first in a number of both timely and informative uh, updates for you as this important project for the organization moves forward. We're going to cover a couple of areas. Um, we've been working in, uh, in, a, in a process that we call discovery for the last couple of months. Myself, Scott, and, and, and a few other folks that are on the team have in this discovery process uh, gone out and interviewed and talked to a lot of people in the organization. I personally conducted 40 interviews, uh, probably talked to just about every manager and supervisor in the organization. And uh, I, along with the others who conducted those interviews, uh, which we did here and out where the work is getting done in a number of instances, did this so that we could learn more about the organization uh, from an organizational perspective from a process perspective, how does the work get done? And to learn what kind of technologies are in place today that we might be able to leverage as we go through this process, particularly from an integration perspective. So I want to share a little bit of what we learned in that process with you, and then I'm going to turn it over to Scott to wrap things up in a few minutes. My role in the discovery process was to look at uh, Des Moines Water Works from an organizational perspective. And as I did that, I also, uh, as you might uh, expect, got into some of the process and technology areas. But that was kind of my focus. And as I went through that organizational evaluation, I used these two sets of best practices, if you will, and asked a lot of questions that have been developed significantly over the last 15 or 20 years and, and that I have actually used as I've gone through the process of, uh, of performing performance evaluations of public and private utilities all across the United States and Canada and South America. And uh, um, in fact, I just we just finished our 82nd uh, utility performance evaluation just a couple of weeks ago. So I used the very same set of best practices in this evaluation as, uh, as, I, as I have done in all of those prior evaluations. What you see here is a list of uh, best practices on the right hand side that we use when we're looking at the business of operations and maintenance or what I think of as the core business of most utilities. And then the things that you see on the left hand column are the best practices that we use to evaluate the supporting functions. And what I want to say before I leave this slide and get into some of the details about this is a couple of things. Uh, the first thing is that, unbeknownst to me before I got here, 
it turns out that Des Moines Water Works was one of the agencies that was involved in some research and development work 15 plus years ago that actually led to these sets of best practices. And uh, while I have, have evaluated a number of the other utilities that were involved in that process, as well as many other utilities around the country in the ensuing years, I can tell you today that I've never seen a utility that has deployed these best practices as well as they're being deployed here at Des Moines Waterworks. It's just amazing. Um, as an example, the number of crews that you have out in the field serving the population that you're serving here is the best by far that I've seen anywhere in this country in all of these evaluations that I've done. So you're doing some great things and you're doing some things really well in the area of your core business of operations and maintenance of a utility. Now, the chain is only as strong as the weakest link. So you can have the best men and women out there on your field crews, but if their vehicles won't run, if we can't keep them staffed appropriately through our HR support services, if we can't provide them with the tools and materials that they need through purchasing and procurement, then they're not gonna be as effective as they possibly can be. So that's why we look at the other parts of the organization and evaluate them using these business best practices. And I'll tell you, I think you have a perfect model here because you have your own HR, you have your own procurement, you have all of the essential services to support the people that are involved in your core business right here every day. And that means that every link in that chain is as strong as it possibly can be. And I think that that's why you look so good from my perspective as I've been going through this discovery process in the last few weeks. That said, the, every organization out there has some areas where they can improve. And so obviously our opportunity and our goal here as a part of the Enterprise Asset Management Project is to look for opportunities where the deployment of this new technology would provide some performance improvement opportunities or potential for performance improvement opportunities in the organization. And so here are a few of the things that we've observed. This is kind of the tip of the iceberg <coughs> because we've got a limited amount of time to spend with you today, and I'm not even gonna go through all of these because you've got them in your handouts, but I will point out a couple of things. One thing that <coughs> virtually every utility in the country is facing today is the realization that in a fairly short period of time, a number of years, we're gonna lose a lot of our people to retirement. Um, most agencies are anticipating a loss of between 40 and 45% of their organization to retirement in the next five years. Those people when they leave, however, are the people who have been here for the longest and they know the most about your organization and about your assets. And so a 40% loss of staff can represent a 60 or 70% loss of knowledge to your organization. So the Enterprise Asset Management Project is a unique opportunity to capture and institutionalize a lot of that knowledge before it walks out the door as it inevitably will. I think another opportunity that's kind of connected to that is the opportunity for improved documentation of the way that the work gets done out there. The better we can do at documenting the work, the more uniform the performance will get, the more cross-training we can do, and the more integration of operations and maintenance staff and duties can result from that, that will contribute to this long-term goal that you have of being as optimal from a performance perspective as you can be. And then finally, this as a top tier technology system that you're going to be putting into place offers you a lot of opportunities from a technology integration perspective that have not existed prior to this point. So as we go through this process and we integrate this new technology with other technologies that you're already running, we're gonna be able to leverage the investment that you've made in all of those technologies up to this point and maximize the return on investment of all of those technologies ultimately. So that's our look at this from an organizational perspective. We also looked at, at the utility from a process perspective. And from an enterprise asset management uh, uh, perspective, the things that we are interested in are listed up there on the, on the slide now. We're interested in work management. 
and we're interested specifically in work management as it gets conducted in the areas that we consider to be the core business, and that is the customer service, water production, parks and grounds, distribution, and fleet. But again, there are some areas that are integrated with those core business functions that are also integral to enterprise asset management. One of those is procurement because of the obvious relationship between procurement and materials management that I mentioned earlier. And then we also included engineering in the process because from an asset perspective, the engineers are the first ones who touch those assets when they're being identified, the need is being identified, and, and the engineering and design and procurement of those assets is occurring. And the engineers are the, usually the last ones to touch the assets as they get decommissioned and replaced uh, when they have uh, reached their, their, their life extent. And so all of those groups were included up to this, pro up to this point, and we've uh, worked with each of those groups and evaluated from a process perspective, uh, as you see here. Again, we've identified a number of opportunities or potential opportunities that, uh, that we're excited about and that we think are, are really quite real and will provide us with additional return on investment in the project. Again, I'm not going to read all of these to you. I will just highlight a couple of them and say that uh, it's uh, extremely important these days that everybody be focused not only from an operations and maintenance perspective, but even from a planning and identification of future projects perspective on the cost of assets and how we can maximize our return on investment for, uh, from our assets over the entire life cycle of the assets. And this is going to be um, the first time that you're going to be able to do that as a utility once we get the enterprise asset management uh, uh, project up and running. It'll be the first time that you'll be able to show in black and white that an asset is now costing you more to maintain than it would to replace. And you'll be able to make the strongest business uh, uh, decisions based on that data, more so than you, ever, you have ever been able to in the past. And of course, when we talk about asset management, we have a tendency to think about pipes and valves and pumps and buildings and things like that. But one of the most important assets you have are your human assets. And, and, and this is very much about uh, learning ways to optimize and, and maximize the return on investment that we get from the people within our organization as well. And so we've identified a number of opportunities in that area. Uh, during the discovery phase. Finally, we've looked at this from the technology perspective since it is a technology project. And as I've already mentioned, we've identified a number of opportunities from an integration perspective. We have also identified some opportunities from a performance management and a performance optimization perspective. And again, that gets back to the human resources or the human assets as much as the physical assets. And we're also looking at ways to improve procurement and warehousing and material storage and materials availability and, and at mobilizing all of this so that we can get the information to the people out there in the field who are making the critical decisions day in and day out uh, so that those decisions are, be are better than ever before. And I think that that's going to be one of the keys in terms of the return on investment that we're going to get from this project. So I'm going to turn this over to Scott for some closing thoughts, and thank you very much. Thanks, Brad. Um, I just wanted to talk to the board a little bit about, uh, at a more high level, in terms of the last couple of months that we've been working on this project, um, in terms of the overall project management and how things have been going. Um, first off, I'd like to commend Randy and his staff, the department, and everybody that we've worked with participated in the workshops. I mean, we. We asked for a significant time commitment from staff to come in on these these workshops, these interviews, over the course of the last month and a half or so, and it has been a fantastic problem. I mean, we thought that we were going to have to do a lot of rescheduling and, and, and reordering the, the process, and it just has not been the case. They have stepped up. They have contributed in the workshops. They've just been fantastic throughout the whole process. Very engaged. We've been getting great input on it. So I just want to send that along because that was, we understand that they have their day-to-day -day work that they have to do. I mean, they have their regular jobs and this is something extra that that's part of this project is. It's an important part of the, of the agency uh, 
operationally and going forward in the future, and they definitely have stepped up on it. So it's been really, really fantastic. Um, the third point is that the, 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 from the Wolpert team's perspective right now, and as Brad has mentioned as well, as and Stratum, our sub-consultant, have been here over a month, and we are very excited about this project because of the acceptance of staff through all these workshops in the details in terms of the model development and dealing with things at a best practice level. Um, they've been very accepted. There's been a lot of acceptance on it. They've given us good feedback on it. And it really looks like the model is going to come out at the end of the day as being a, an ideal situation in terms of going forward at a best practice uh, perspective. So we are really, really excited about that. And that falls into the last item is that we're so excited about it that we think at the end of the day, when we're done with this implementation process, this will be a national model for the country. And we don't say that lightly because our consultants are involved in the the ISO certification process and the POS 55 certification process that's going in that will become in the next year or so a standard thing that utilities such as the waterworks can enter into. And it's a pretty rigorous criteria in order to meet that those requirements through the modeling process and the implementation. But based on what we see so far in terms of the acceptance and how the organization is approaching it, it is a very real thing that could happen. It could be the first in the nation for ISO certification. So I just want to let the board know about that, that um, in terms of from the project management perspective and the way things are going, it really couldn't be any better. And we're certainly here to answer any questions and comments you might have at this point. I do have a question. Uh, when we go back to the process observations, and I don't know if you can flip back There we go. One of the things, so that you know, we have asked to please keep us informed. We realize this is a major investment in, that the utility has made, and we don't want it to just go away. We want to know, so I appreciate, I think we all appreciate this kind of information, especially early on. Um, so please keep us informed. But if it's on a quarterly basis, we sure don't want it once a year. We want, we want to know what's happening. But as you look at the process observations, um, I heard you say, we've noticed a number of these activities through our discovery process. And if I look at number three and number four, the redundant activities and labor utilization, so that we have the right expectation, and I don't want our expectation to be too great, should we expect to have some kind of information coming back showing us labor savings, for instance, through redefining roles and responsibilities and looking at the labor utilization, we're able to save half an FTE here, which we can combine with this, netting overall savings to the utility. Is that expectation too great? No, I mean, I think that's, we, we understand that that's what you're looking for and at the end of the year, um, and going forward into the second phase when we actually do the implementation process. Right now it's fairly early because we're still in the modeling process. Mm -hmm. But when we actually start implementing the systems and things, we'll be able to come through and say how much time savings you're, expect you're experiencing, how much you're saving on material and procurement costs. So we will come back with some ROI numbers okay. to show what, you know, hard numbers of things that you're actually saving as part of the program. What other expectations should we have as, an, as a board as we continue to have updates? What types of things from your initial observations do you think will be seen? Well, I know the plan, at least from what we talked about, the, the, so we'll have at least a quarterly up, um, on, and, and there may be some other times where we come before the board, but at least once a quarter, or there's some other major milestone or something we need to report, we may come back sooner than that. Um, and I think the next major um, milestone will be uh, around the uh, first quarter of next year when we actually go into the implementation phase and we'll start, we'll lay out in terms of operationally how things are going to go and where we see some of the key, we'll give you an early indication where we see some of the key improvements that are going to be going through and then at the end we'll give you some numbers on that. So I think the first quarter of next year will probably be we'll have something significant to show in terms of an overall plan for, for the 
project. And just the only other point I wanted to make when you started off, you said um, you're doing some great things, and we recognize we're not doing those things. It's it's all the staff, right. and it's our leadership, and so, I mean, I think this is, I'm, I'm really pleased to hear that. I don't think any of us are surprised, but it's nice to have a consultant come in and yeah. say, so, it's, yeah. it's, nice job to our staff. Yeah, it's been a very, it's been, it's been wonderful. I mean, when you're in a program such as this, in terms of the, scheduling and the amount of work that has to get done. I mean, the fact that we're able to meet the workshop schedules and get into this early discovery process, it's, it's really been beneficial. How many of those 40 initial interviews were field folks, approximately? You know, uh, I mentioned 40 interviews, and those were just the ones that I conducted. The, there, there are three or four other people are involved in this too. And so combined, we probably conducted over 100 interviews. And we conducted interviews of people that are virtually in every uh, uh, section of the organization. So we interviewed people in, in distribution and in water production. Now, most of those interviews uh, were of uh, first line supervisors okay. and up. And the reason that we typically do it that way is because the first line supervisor will, in theory anyway, have uh, a global perspective of what's happening uh, at the working level of the organization that's immediately under them. What's going to happen in the future as we continue through this process is that we'll actually end up spending time out in the field observing crews and individuals performing work so that we can verify the things that we learned in the early phases of discovery and things that, things that aren't verified that turn out to be different, we can actually take those issues into account as we develop the, the, uh, the approach for implementing the system in the coming months. The reason I ask that is I don't think we want to miss out on that important knowledge base. Um, and I think back to it was maybe three years ago now on Christmas Eve, and I've told this story many times, but Mr. Butts was sitting in the waterworks truck out in front of my house Christmas Eve night, and my water went out, and there was a frozen pipe, and um, I was so impressed with him, as I am with all of our workers, but there was some tool that he needed that the utility only had two of them, and the other one was you know, somewhere else within our service area, and yeah, he didn't know who I was. And I said, you know, what are you waiting for? And he said, well, I'm waiting for this part to come here, this tool, so that we can measure something or another. I mean, these guys in the back probably know exactly what I'm talking about. And it, it was some crazy little tool that he needed. So if we are really looking at what the utility needs, I want to make sure we're not just hitting that top tier, but we're asking those that are delivering service to our utility what they need. Um, so, every year I see Mr. Butts at the holiday party, I always thank him for turning our water back on at Christmas. <laughs> but let's not forget those folks. Sure. Don't have somebody come over to my house and shut it off on Christmas Eve. <laughs> 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 huh? Okay. Right. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, thank you. Uh, a few other general comments. Uh, we referred uh, earlier to the water quality report that's uh, in the packet number item F under uh, tab four here. Um, but a couple of highlights there. Uh, one of the things we're pursuing, uh, the Iowa Department of Economic Development, or whatever their new title is going to be, um, has a grant, $800,000 grant, that they are uh, going to divvy up through the Department of Natural Resources for uh, creating uh, watershed authorities. And uh, we are working towards trying to create a watershed authority on the Raccoon River. And uh, we anticipate there will be other groups looking at other uh, watersheds in the state. So the uh, they plan to award, I believe it's $30,000 to create a 20AD organization uh, initially. 
and then once that 2080 organization is created, then they'll have a second divvying of funds that begin to uh, formulate just how that organization is going to work. I don't know that they've got enough money through this first grant to actually start to fund on the ground projects, but that's ultimately where uh, these authorities are going to uh, have some real advantage. Rathbun Regional Alliance uh, has been very successful in getting a total of over uh, multi-million dollars uh, grants to uh, protect uh, Rathbun Lake. And it's that kind of uh, concerted effort through a 28D organization that can apply and uh, receive grants in the future. So uh, I think this is a gigantic first step in you know, trying to get the funding for improving uh, and then additional funding for projects up in the watershed. Uh, so that's one that we're tracking. And then uh, cyanobacteria have kind of made their yearly appearance here in the latter part of August and uh, September. So we've shifted uh, from the raccoon to the uh, Des Moines River. Uh, although I think most folks have probably noticed the lower flows in both rivers <coughs> at this point in time due to uh, the last couple of months of fairly dry weather. Uh, both rivers still have uh, in the order of 300 CFS of flow coming down, and uh, the uh, Des Moines will always stay at about 200 CFS or above. Uh, the raccoon's going to flow whatever is coming down the river, and uh, it isn't until it gets below 100 CFS uh, before uh, it might seriously impact operations. Although, uh, you know, very likely will drop down to. Oh, maybe eight to ten million gallons a day capacity coming out of the uh, McMullen treatment plant with that kind of low river flow because those are the level of flows that we saw back on the early 2000s when that treatment plant was first put online. So uh, one of the projects we're pursuing is looking at uh, trying to enhance that water level in the river and uh, uh, that involves uh, Corps of Engineers, and, mm -hmm. and so we'll see just w where that is going, but that's a project we've had uh, in our vision here for a while, and hopefully that will uh, help supplement those kind of low river flows. Um, and then uh, if anybody has been out to the west end of the park, uh, we are working through a Polk County contract to pave the Event Loop Road. Uh, that uh, will be a, a big enhancement uh, that should get done uh, will get started this week and there's equipment out there and that'll be a big enhancement uh, for <coughs> all the events that mm -hmm. the users of that uh, part of the park uh, so that kind of hits the highlights uh, I've got a status report I'll hand out here at the end of the meeting that uh, uh, Stephanie handed out, that will be kind of a quarterly EAM uh, status report that we'll include in the packets from here on out. Okay. Great. Thank you. Anything else for Well, we've got the uh, draft committee agendas. Okay. So I'll hand out. Planning, first of all. And the uh, architecture uh, competition is one that's going to crank mm -hmm. up here in October. Uh, next Monday, I believe it is, Monday is the due date for uh, anyone submitting proposals. And uh, there's a jury that's uh, in place. And second, third week of October, that jury will get together and uh, try to uh, select a top three or five proposers in which uh, then they will be asked to do a little more detail, provide more detail on what ideas they are proposing for uh, Waterworks Park. Uh, but we'll discuss uh, that competition and uh, where that stands in a little more detail next Tuesday. Uh, uh, we've, one of the things is uh, uh, probably uh, Jim and Sue have seen uh, and uh, 
Leslie and Graham, you may know that we do lease out parts of Waterworks Park, uh, Soccer South, raise one, mm -hmm. and there's a little league and the uh, football field. Anyway, we've had varying uh, lease terms uh, mm -hmm. and amounts. They, they're close, but we want to standardize that, and uh, that's what uh, this item is. Uh, Waterworks Land Lease Analysis is going to provide. We'll discuss that. Okay. And then uh, find a little more detail on what we have found about the city's plan for the municipal services park. So that's planning. Right. Thank you. And then finance and audit. Um, uh, if ready, uh, we'll have the uh, uh, Waterworks uh, AFSCME agreement regarding wages and health insurance. If that's ready for uh, discussion. Uh, that'll be part of the finance and audit uh, agenda on uh, October 18th. Notice the date shift there. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, employee benefits package will go hand in hand with that. Um, and then uh, draft water rates and budget uh, will be part of finance and audit. So that will be a fairly full agenda if all of those things are ready to go on the 18th. So how long do you expect those meetings to last? <laughs> <laughs> Until we've covered all of it. <laughs> Until it's done. <laughs> then I might just, uh, with looking at overall activities, you know, October 4th is planning, as the sh uh, uh, sheet shows, uh, the 18th finance and audit meeting, and then the 25th would be our board meeting. And then we have the dates for the November. November. Committee meetings and board meetings. And that's all that I have. That's all there is. Anything else from anybody on the board? If not, uh, we will adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.